one of the high class problems we're facing right now, it's, it's a testament to our, our teams, is you know, multiple bidders on, on almost everything we're bringing out. And that, that, that creates a whole other conversation, which was unheard of. Right, right. It, it, you know, before, you were just so happy to get, like, they are going to develop a script. Yeah, they're not really going to pay anything, yeah. but they're going to at least put it into the pipeline. And today, luckily, uh, I think we're in a situation, and, and all, it could be a broadcaster, it could be a premium player, it could be a streamer. All these considerations, they all go to the same place, which is something we talk about a lot, and, and John has kind of instilled into us from his own experience at Sony and other places, find the right home. The deal is obviously super important, but if it's not meant to be on that network, however great the deal is, one season and out, is yeah. certainly not as attractive as five, six, seven, or more seasons on economics that might have been a little more modest. I imagine uh, every negotiation these days basically is, is some, some, you say something like, well, Apple TV is really interested, so. <laughs> we're, we're honest brokers. We don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> to break out in a 450 show universe uh, is incredibly difficult for any platform, let alone one that may have, might have 80, but there are so many shows that really, I, I think now it, it takes for a show to get off the ground and to really actually make a determination about its longevity and its value for a platform is really two seasons. And that used to be in broadcast, one airing. Yeah. You know, which if it didn't get a 28 share, you know, disaster. And uh, now you're parsing down to like, well, it was 600,000 people, but 200,000 of those watched the whole thing. Right, right. And, you know, <laughs> that's amazing. These shows, in our view, have to almost market themselves. Uh, in, in so much as the concepts have to be noisy. And I think Orange had that. I think Weeds had that. I think Genji, everything she touches has that, which is exciting and great for uh, her studio partners and her creative collaborators. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can't really rely any more solely, as you might have as a studio, that the network will just do everything. That they'll, you know, you can kind of sit back and say, oh, they'll get it out there and then we'll just sell it around the world. You really have to partner with them early on. We, within Lionsgate, you know, tap into all of our resources, the massive you know, social media verticals of our theatrical partners in Hunger Games and Twilight and the Divergent franchise, our, our OTT platforms from LOL to Pantaya, Comic-Con and Tribeca, our, net, our shared assets with CBS, with Pop, now Stars. You, you've got to tap into every aspect of that yeah. to potentially help push a show forward. Yeah. One of the reasons that we remain so fiercely independent and focused on being platform agnostic and selling everywhere is so that we can take advantage of those opportunities. Um, and, you know, look, as a seller, as a studio, you're, you're gauging the market at all times. You'll probably get less across with networks that have incredible stability, right? It, you know, the, the, the Great Wall of China, I know Kelly's in here somewhere, is selling something at CBS because they're always winning. They, there's no room on that schedule. It's not like they're desperately calling out to everybody saying, God, what are we going to do? They're on top. They remain, have been for a long time. So that, that's a, but other networks that are maybe between or long running franchises have gone away or they're pivoting, which Amazon's in the middle of. That's where the opportunity lies, and you know our job is to you know forecast at least enough ahead to be in there with the right product. 